Okay, these notes are electrons and atoms. The electron cloud model of the atom is the most up-to-date model of the atom at this point. In this model, electrons are found in an electron cloud around the nucleus. Niels Bohr discovered that electrons orbit around the nucleus in different energy levels. The orbits for electrons are quantized. That means there's a, they're a, definite, dif, dis, bleh, they're a definite distance from the nucleus. These discrete orbits are called principal energy levels. Each principal energy level is given a specific number called a principal quantum number. The first principal quantum, or the first principal energy level is n equals 1. Um, and that's actually the one that's closest to the nucleus. So there are seven principal energy levels that it can exist in an atom. And if you look at the periodic table, there are actually seven rows. Okay, each one represents an energy level. So there's only two, you'll notice there's two elements in the first row. So those are the only ones that have just one energy level. And then the next row, there's, what, eight elements in the second row. That means those eight elements have two energy levels, and so on and so forth. So there's seven of them that they can have. Now, under normal conditions, electrons occupy the lowest energy level it possibly can. In other words, they want to be as close to the nucleus as possible. So that first energy level is the lowest energy level. Now, if you have n equals 2, that has a little higher energy. n equals 3 has even more energy, OK? So when they all occupy the lowest energy that they possibly can occupy, it's called the ground state. Now, let's look at the atomic emission spectrum. What we did in class today was we were looking at the atomic emission spectrum, only we just saw the colors. If we had looked through um, a specific tube, we would have seen the actual atomic emission spectrum, which would have been all the different wavelengths that light was being pushed out. So principal energy levels higher than the ground state levels are called excited state levels. Electrons can be given enough energy to jump from the ground state to an excited state. And when the electrons go back to the ground state, they give off extra energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. And it's usually in the form of light. Sometimes it's also UV or IR, but a lot of times it's actual visible light that we can see. Now, each type of atom gives off a specific set of frequencies or wavelengths of electromagnetic magnetic radiation. This is the atom's unique atomic emission spectrum. Hydrogen gives off light, violet light, blue-violet light, blue-green light, and red light. Okay, um, if you look at this, this is the hydrogen. You have a gas discharge tube containing hydrogen, and it's going through a prism, and these are the four numbers. Now, on, that, on your notes, you have a big old square. What I want you to do is write this down, okay? So you write down violet, and then I want you to write down the wavelengths, which is 410 nanometers. Then I want you to write down blue-violet, and it's nanometers. So draw a picture of this. You can use colors if you want, or just write in black and white. doesn't matter. But that's what that little square is for on the second page of your notes. Okay, energy sublevels. Principal energy levels contain energy sublevels. Principal energy level one consists of a single sublevel. So on your paper where it says principal energy level underneath one, you're going to put one. So one has one sublevel, two has two sublevels, three has three sublevels, four has four, but guess what? Five, six, and seven all only have four. There are only four sublevels. So they can't contain any more than four. Okay, this is a pretty good um, view. If you look at the bottom, when S equals, or the N equals one, there's only one sublevel. N equals two, there's two, three, there's three in there, and four. It's kind of like a stadium seating. And that's kind of a good representation for the sublevels. Now, five, six, and seven would also only have four. So it doesn't go any wider than that. Okay, shapes of orbitals. Sublevels are labeled S, P, D, or F according to the shapes of the atom's orbitals. So every sublevel contains orbitals. Orbitals are kind of the paths that the electrons actually take on that sublevel. So if you think about it, you're on the first floor, you're on the first energy level, and there's only one room, okay? And basically, it can only fit an S 
orbital in it, which is a circle. So the electrons can only go around in a circle in that room, okay? Now let's say you go on to the second floor. The second floor has two rooms in them, okay? Now, both those rooms, the path would be either be a circle for the S or would be a pi shape, which is P, okay? So the P orbitals are dumbbell shaped. So they're either gonna be running around in one room with the S or running around in the other room in a P shaped, okay? So it's kind of the path they take in that room or in that sublevel, okay? So then you go on to the third floor and there's three rooms, okay? So they're either gonna be running around in an S, a P, or a D shape, depending on which room they're in, which sublevel they're in. So if you think about it that way, I think that helps. Orbitals are the paths that the electrons take the sublevels are the rooms, I guess you could say. Okay, they're the, they're the sublevels. I call them rooms. I mean, they're kind of like the place where they are. And then the energy level is actually like the floor. Okay? I don't know. That's the only way I can really describe it where you guys might actually understand it. Oh, and then all, okay, so if we read here, all S orbitals are spherical, P orbitals are dumbbell shaped, D and F orbitals are weird shaped anyway. So, you'll never have to recognize them. I do want you to be able to recognize an S orbital and a P orbital. Okay, so this is where the shapes are. So here you've got your S, here you've got your P. Now notice there are two S, S really only has one shape though, it's a circle. P is the one that has three. So there's really only one, P has three, D has five different shapes, and then you'll find out later that F has seven different shapes. So it depends on, like P, P is the easiest one to look at because it's got an X, Y, and a Z, kind of like three-dimensional. S is just a sphere around the whole thing. And it's the Ds are the weird ones. No, I'm not gonna have you memorize them or even be able to recognize them. As long as you can recognize S and Ps, you're good as gold. Okay, now this is the important part. Each sublevel has a particular amount of orbitals that fit. So if we're in the first sublevel, each S sublevel contains only one S orbital. So the one room can only have one S. Now you go into the P sublevel, so we're up on the second floor, you got the S room, now you got your P room. There's enough room in that sublevel to fit three P orbitals. So that's your three dimensional thing, your axis, your X, Y, and Z, okay? So that room's a little bit bigger than the first room. Now you go up on the third floor and we have three sublevels, okay? So you've got an S sublevel, which is the small room, where the electrons can only go around in a sphere. Then you have your P room, which is where there's basically three different shapes it can go in. And then your D room, which has five D orbitals, okay? So let's go up on the fourth floor. So remember, the fourth floor has four different sublevels. It has an S sublevel, which is your one S orbital. It has your P sublevel, which has three P orbitals going on. It has a D room, or D sublevel, which has five D orbitals going around. And then it has another room, it's your F room. Your F room has seven different orbitals, so different, seven different paths. Remember, orbitals are the paths that the electrons travel. So that's what's going on. That's why fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh shells are huge, okay? They've got all these electrons and doing all these different really cool things, okay? So, but that's just remember. So the main thing that you've got to remember, okay, is that S has one S, there's an S1 here, let me write it down. There's an S1, P3, D5, and F7. Okay, those are how many orbitals are in each sublevel. Okay, S is one, P is three, D is five, and F is seven. Pretty easy, hopefully. And this is just a little chart. Okay, so you notice the first sublevel. Now, if you go by all the different orbitals that can be in it, so the first energy level only has one S orbital, so it only has one, one sublevel or one S orbital, okay, energy levels. So let me see if I can't. We oh, got yeah, total number of orbitals. Okay, so the next one is your second principal quantum number, has an S and a P. So it has four orbitals, okay? And your next one's your third one, the third energy level. Remember I told you it had three sublevels, or three rooms. It has an S room, a P room, and a D room. And if you add up all those orbitals, there's nine orbitals in there. So that shell's getting pretty big, that energy level. 
Now your fourth energy level, or your fourth shell, has all four of those orbitals. Well, you have one plus three plus five plus seven. That's 16 different orbitals going on. That's a lot of electrons that are floating around in there, okay? So it's pretty cool, right? Well, that's it. So that's what you have to know. Just remember that mainly if you know the S1, P3, D5, and F7, I think you'll be fine on that. If you have any questions, ask me tomorrow. I may go over a little bit more tomorrow in class. Um, in fact, I will based on this, but I needed you to get this background first. So I will see you tomorrow. Bye.